looking at the market now you would be thinking what is happening right there is a lot of red but limited in green and you see some pumping heavily some staying stable and others going down just two videos back i tried to inform you guys there is going to be a correction a upcoming crash right mm -hmm. now if you watch that you also saw this the right place to be in and when we are looking at this stuff it didn't kind of give you much of a heart attack when it was falling to the downside now this correction itself is just a small correction the way i see it and i would explain it with charts don't worry so looking at all coins i feel this is just a bit of correction phase we are going through and the support is still holding btc dominance is giving you a taste of what is coming ahead means it's getting congested now and if this area is acting as a support then we may bounce back to this resistance now if this first resistance line is pushing the price down you can expect the dominance to come all the way down towards 56 and if it doesn't hold go down so that should be an alt season now when you say an alt season you should look at alt btc pair and this is xrp btc pair and this shows you the green day is still running so we are in a green day and that's completely fine inside the pattern we are moving so the rsi and the price gives you that idea that we are still staying relevant now when you look at the fundamental side of this and say why xrp is there you can kind of think okay there was a pre-trial which went ahead and then you also have to understand you know not every time you would be able to get a different idea in different kind of assets but some of them you would be stable now one of my patron actually put this one out david burns so a shout out to him here he kind of gives you the summary of the pre-trial of sec with ripple and for a common man with the common sense now i say that because not everyone have that because it's not the common practice it's bullish because if you are looking at this there are stuff which really hits on point not only one but others too but one of them is a huge hit for sec if they are doing this then you know they can't actually come out and say this is a security and you can't sell like this to ripple welcome to the scientific investor family where we discuss crypto and science behind investing regularly yes upcoming crash and the right place to be in we discussed that previously but after that there was also a highlight again showing bull market to end or will there be a correction a discussion about that and right now if you go into the chart you see this stuff and i told you guys there is a possibility that the support will stay relevant and we would bounce now it is happening now what is the next stuff which you are looking at in terms of price you are looking at 0.67 to 0.68 which is the trend line resistance as you can see so if that is holding that should push the price to the downside again to the support which won't be that much bullish but if we bounce again that's still bullish but if we break it from this level that's going to be cool why because then we're looking at our previous high of 0.78 after which we would be looking towards 0.98 and one dollar mm -hmm. now why is that so relevant because when you look at the rsi say last time when you had a bull flag like this you pumped right so if you are looking at that before it happened here you had a tighter rsi bull flag now here it's not that tighter so i don't expect a 200 300 percentage pump instead i look forward for a 30 to 50 percentage now that's not also a small deal but looking at the crypto market where uh, there are coins which pump 50 100 percentage a day it is kind of you know you need to be on the right asset on the right time right so we'll actually have to discuss through this looking at different assets which we usually do regularly in another patreon group where they are making ton of profits now this statement from imf keeps 
that idea relevant? The answer lies in the fundamental symbiotic relationship. The option to redeem private money into perfectly safe and liquid. It notes and coins, you know, the notes and coins or central bank reserves held by selected banks. These are, you know, now being critically evaluated by the supranational organizations and the central banks. Why? Because they believe that the private sector competition will be challenging for central banks. Why? Because they also understand the central bank stuff is so, you know, primitive. They need to uh, improve gradually at least to stay up with the technology because they state keeping with the pace of the change of technology they are not actually doing that and at the same time in the other end you're having the health crisis which is kind of pushing the economy to the downside where central banks have to push a lot more money in Brrr, that actually means a uh, huge inflation is coming ahead if you're borrowing money from the future that means your children or grandchildren have to pay this back now, how would you actually do that? Try to actually decrease your purchasing power. Say you are a saver. You save money in your bank. Say it's a million dollar. Wow, cool. But what if there is a 10 percentage inflation rate going on? Now, when you see that, or at least hear that, you would be surprised. No, no, no. We are looking at a target of 2 percentage. Okay, fine. Look at nations like Venezuela. What just happened there? Look at nations, say which are kind of not having that much issue, but still the inflation is higher, right? Say Pakistan, say India, they have 8, 10, 20, 100 percentage of inflation. So if that rate is going to be there, then the money which you put in your bank account won't be relevant with the purchasing power. Because as I highlighted before, IMF does understand that the digitization is here. And this is a central bank putting this one. The Saudi central bank, but this one that they are on the instant payment network from February 21st. Now, it's not Ripple, you have to understand. It's their own network. But why am I bullish? What the technical sound like? Let's dig in. See, in the SEC issue for XRP, as Johnny highlights here, the SEC failure to provide a clear framework hindered at Ripple's ability to sell XRP to financial institutions. Now, you know, when we look at these kind of issues, you also have to understand, you know, one of the statement clearly mentioned here is, it's, you know, in that pre-trial, they clearly gave you that idea that exchanges went to the SEC asking, can we use this? So, that secondary sale from XRP was not blocked by SEC. Say here, when they're talking, they're talking about the sales, right, in the secondary market. And here, it's like around 2019, the SEC was approached by a large exchange or exchanges and questioned the SEC if XRP was deemed to be security. The SEC did not affirm that XRP was a security at that time. Now, if they don't even have an idea about whether this asset is a security. Now, remember, this is all happening from 2013. Ripple, the company is there. And if they don't even know that whether that asset is a security by 2019, <sighs> I don't know how to explain. Now, this is happening inside a court. So all of the favor is going towards Ripple, the company, and XRP, the asset. Now, say so they say Ripple, the company, hold a lot of XRP. Okay. Now, if you look at oil, different nations hold a ton of oil, right? Say so Saudi, they have a lot of oil. Doesn't mean they have everything, right? If Russia, India, the consumers, they decide, okay, we don't need this. Bum. That's it. The demand goes down. In a similar way, this is an asset created by them. If you look at Bitcoin, okay, we agree that. What's the supply? Okay, how much does the founder or the Satoshi Nakamoto hold? That's also a big amount considering, you know, the supp total supply of that. Now, it's not about BTC or Ether or their founders holding this. This is about the common sense. Now, that's kind of the fundamental stuff which we have to look at. But at the same time, when we talk about the inflation, why are we talking about that? 
because once your USD value goes down, these prices will increase. Why? Because these are here in USD, right? You're not looking at a different asset. You're looking at a fiat currency, which itself is a depreciating asset. Now, if you want to make money, not lose your purchasing power, you need to take certain steps. Say here from the Fed, Janet Yellen and Jerome Powell both appear having some kind of stress about the financial markets. Why? And still they are trying to push in economic stimulus. So borrowing from the future, giving it to the current generation to, you know, just give them the fish, let them be hungry for next day, not teaching them to catch that fish. So the risk of inflation is too high and the central banks do understand they have issues. Now, what kind of issues? Central banks would thus have to become more like Apple or Microsoft in order to keep central bank digital currencies on the frontier of technology and in the wallets of users as predominant and preferred form of digital money. Look at that. They are saying preferred form. Why? Because there are others who do it way better than them and there are options for them to be inside them. Now, this is one of the negative news which I personally see here, MoneyGram stating, okay, because of the lawsuit, now we are stepping back. Now, that can be a caution, the price. Now, because not every investor understand the market and the price, they would jump in and jump out. They would not make much of a profit. Instead, they would make a lot of a loss. Why? Because I see a lot of guys who are entering crypto market thinking I'm going to be a millionaire. Now, if you want to do that, if you want to become one, you need to be financially mature. You need to have that financial education where you understand what these means, right? Now, I know there's a lot of demand for the Patreon right now, and I see a lot of guys coming in. But what I want to tell you guys is if you don't know how to read a chart which I put out, say these are some examples. Say this is CRO. Now, today is 23 here, and as you can see, this is 22nd. You go into the coin paprika look at cro what it has done cool better now if you go down you look at phantom you'll also understand that uh, also did comparatively better now yeah i gave them the alert now why is this so important because when i'm saying target one reach and the next target is say target two is 0.37 which is a short to medium term trade and we are moving towards that up means you need to understand the chart at least that this is the entry. Mm -hmm. If you are to enter, mm -hmm, this would be a good entry. And if you are to take profit, this would be kind of a better area to take that. Now, I also give you idea that the RSI is breaking out of the falling wedge, which is bullish. Then the MACD is also breaking to the upside with the positive volume on the positive side. So for me, this is bullish. Now, if you don't even understand this particular chart, Wow, I can't help you. First, you need to learn the basics. Now, yeah, I'm setting up a lesson for charts, understanding charts, how I do charts, what you have to look at when I post a chart. So you don't have to learn charting from someone else to understand my charts, right? So I'm trying to put that time together to put that lesson. Now, that would be kind of basic stuff where you understand what charts mean, mm -hmm. how you can understand the price action, what you would be looking for a particular pattern say this is just connecting this high this high and extending that now you got two point now once you extend that one you kind of look where exact is that trend point where you get another touch so this one is acting as a support here it went up it came back down it was acting as a support then it broke below then when it came up that area acted as a resistance again so that's support trend line so this is just an example of what you need to look at when you are looking at the price to get clarity of what the price is doing now these are just lines now most of the time when i explain i try to connect say the support resistance zone why now you extend this you understand the support was here once here twice whereas the resistance was here once and twice so there is a standard deviation in the movement of price why because it's the human being you are trading there human beings are completely emotional creatures where if you don't understand how to control your emotion you would be wrecked now one day you'll be saying okay i'm making profit another day you're like okay i'm making loss why if you are not doing something consistently 
it would be really hard for you. Now, say there are thousand members, not thousand members, say nearing thousand members in the Patreon. You would have one or two guys still unhappy because they only executed one trade or two trade which went wrong. But there would be guys who executed 10, 20 trades and made profit in 80 to 90 percent of them. Similarly, this market gives you the opportunity to make money. Now, if you are an XRP holder, why do you actually want to think about that? Or why others are thinking about that? At least those who enter in the Patreon are looking at more opportunity to make more capital and then accumulate more XRP because they believe in this project. They believe in the fundamentals and the vision of Ripple the company. So that's why I try to sort out these opportunities. Say KSM, I think we actually posted a chart in KSM, maybe in Telegram alerts, but I definitely did. Yeah. For KSM, this was a chart which I put previously. So, you know, we are already inside there looking at the market when it was going down, highlighting there as a possibility that we can break to the upside. Why? The price is showing you a parabolic move to the upside when the RSI is showing you a rounded bottom. Now, why do you have to care about XRP BTC pair or any altcoin to BTC pair? Because it's so important for you to understand this that when the BTC is moving down, the Bitcoin dominance is reducing, you're looking at an altcoin season, right? Alt season as we call it. What is the importance here? Because there is a time frame when BTC moves down and the alts move up. And when you trade that particular pair, you get more benefit. Say, for example, if you are looking at an item which has, say, 1000 percentage profit in terms of USD, and you are trading BTC pair, whereas BTC is also an appreciating asset going up, you are reducing your gains. Instead, there would be a time window in which BTC is going down and your altcoin is going up. So at that particular point, you make double the profit or at least way more than that of the target. Why? Because one asset is going down, right? So in a similar manner, you need to understand this. See, once we break above this, now, if I go into the real time chart of XRP here for you guys, this is what I see. Now, this is on a daily. I can go into a four hour chart and look at the same. Okay, what are we actually doing? I have a pattern, at least in front of my eyes, for which I'm looking at here. Now, if I do this, that's not a bad stuff, right? If I'm looking at this, the close about this particular level, which is point. 636 would turn XRP bullish and move it all the way further towards 0 0.78, 0 0.9 and the further targets. Now, why do I kind of show you this? Because I get a confirmation from the RSI that the same trend is being supported. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, MACD is still having that bull market trend here in the short term. And if you zoom out, now remember this is a four hour chart. So if you go into a macro chart, you'll understand this trend is still relevant. The MACD is moving to the upside. Now, where is the MACD right now? It's in the positive territory, not in the negative side of the MACD, right? So as the MACD is bouncing inside the positive territory, and I see this, yes, there can be that game of patience where you go here, you know, you then kind of move a little bit here, then again down and then finally bursting upside. But most of the time, remember, the pattern doesn't actually go till the end. It breaks way ahead. There are some which, as I highlighted here, if it's to move through the pattern, it would have been doing this here and then bursting. But it did it way earlier, right? Say here, if you are looking at the pattern, it could continue here. But... It just broke about there. Why it's looking to do that? Because, you know, there are a lot of different assets which you can compare it with as we did in the last video with Link and XRP Wave. Now, if you look at all the different charts which I'm posting here for the patrons and then you go into the market cap of different ones, you understand there is a lot of opportunity popping up and there are people who are taking benefit of these. Now, you don't have to actually go into 10, 20, 30 different assets. Instead, you can be in three or four or at least, you know, three that would give you an exposure or a maximum of 10 to 15 to get these benefits. Right? Now you go back, step back on a weekly four XRP and look at this asset. What's it doing? It's actually moved to the top and it's still staying near that top. And now with 
you know general common sense here which you can see is at least for my eyes i see a continuation pattern like this which is usually happening in majority of the different assets and i've shown you this many times now the same can repeat here if this candle is going to burst through and close somewhere here now why do i actually say that i'll delete all of these and just show you something this particular red candle what does it show you now for my eyes it shows like the price opened here and then the price went down and closed here but before closing it actually came all the way down towards 0.48 and then the buyers pushed the price back up and closed it here after which the buyers are still in control and pushing the price to the upside so that's the green candle but they pushed the price all the way up to 0.617 but the sellers got in and pushed the price down. Now there's a battle of buyers and sellers going in. So that's basically the supply and demand at that price level. Now, if you don't know that market, it's really understandable that you need more education. Supply and demand is the basic stuff which you have to understand. Then go look at the volume of each different asset. If you're trading an asset with you know, little no volume there, it's going to be really hard to take out even if you have profits. So you need to be on the right coin in your portfolio so that you can maximize your gain in one side and minimize your risk to the maximum possible extent. Now we do that in the Patreon regularly. Now, yeah, that's starting from different tiers. They get the portfolio assessment and then the financial education if you are making money how to handle that money which alternative assets are best say how long this bull market can last and once that bull market is reaching its end what should you do you are taking profits cool where would you put that how would you preserve that how would you increase that these are all the questions because if you don't know that stuff you're going to end up losing that money in the next two to three years even though you waited three years for this market to run up and you waited patiently all through the bull run to make that enormous amount of money and then if you are throwing it back into the seas uh, that's up to you but i would say do listen to experts now when i say experts it's not including me that's individuals like howard marx you know benjamin graham their books and other stuffs which give you wisdom so guys, I really believe you received value for your time. And if you really did, please do hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done that already. If you would like to enroll in the Patreon, I'll say have a little bit of patience. Jump on on the first of the next month, which would be better. Or if you don't have that patience and you want more charts on different assets, yes, you can jump in. But in a lower tier, that would be better because the payment is again pending on the first of the month. You don't want to pay for just four days and pay it again all right so in that case it's better to enroll in five dollar ten dollar or basic tiers and then upgrade on the first of the next month so guys i'll meet you on the next video bye for now <music>